In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with reports in Project Insight. From the home screen, you can choose the reports icon, or you'll note there's a reports icon at the top bar. This icon shows you a list of reports that it goes to the reports home and shows you a list of reports that you have saved or someone has shared with you before. So you can see these are all reports that I have saved in my saved reports list so I can quickly jump to them. But let me say, it, let's, when you first start Project Insight, you won't have any reports. So you're going to want to navigate to the reports and you can choose here from the top bar. These are the most common reports. People will do a project report, cross project Gantt chart report, task report, reports on sprints or project requests and companies. Again, these tiles will, the tiles that are presented depend on the, the particular add-ons that you have installed. If I want to do a real basic portfolio, uh, project portfolio report to show me all the projects in the system. You can choose project here. This is just an ad hoc report. And then just choose at the bottom here, we have built-in projects. At the top, you can see these are some of my saved reports. But here's a built-in report, just active projects. If I click that, this will, net, this will actually run all active projects in the system. And you'll see a report that will be produced in a second. Now all of the active projects are shown with the default columns. That was how simple it is to build uh, a really basic report or run an out of the box active project report. If I want to save that report, you can choose save report here, or if you would like to reorder your columns, you, or you can right mouse click to insert another column. Maybe you want to add actual total, meaning the actual dollar amount of time entries into there. You can right mouse click I chose that column and the report will be regenerated for you automatically with the actual total values in this report. And if I want to move that over to the end, I can just drag that over there. If I want to save this layout for later, I can save this layout and say this is the default with actual total. Now this is now going to be a layout of columns that I can use in different reports in the future. If I want to change all my settings, I can click on here to go to the filter. And then now you can actually filter with all these advanced features, filters here. So right now I've got the active projects. If I want inactive projects to be included, I can choose that. Or if I just want archive projects only, I can do that. We have some built-in filter types like projects that I'm assigned to. That will filter this list and now only projects that I'm assigned to will be available in the report. So that, that's how quick and easy it is that you can build a different kind of report and get those results. So now I'm only seeing things I'm assigned to in my report. If I want to save that again, I can save it here. You'll see a save report option in almost every report, as well as the ability to share that with other people in my company or different groups and departments. You can schedule some reports to be emailed to you as well. And you can put a description for your report. So this is how you can build out these saved reports. So now I'm going to navigate to the reports menu and show you some of the saved reports that I've already saved. Here's a cross project Gantt chart of just the active projects that are in the system. So this is again, a very simple report that I created really easily and then saved it for myself for future reference so I can navigate to this from anywhere in the system by just the click of a button. If I would like to see a certain kind of task report, I want to see just incomplete tasks by person and project. I can click that link and now I'm jumping to a saved report that I made of incomplete tasks by person and project. The uh, this particular report is has been using the group by so here's by person and project these are the different tasks by project and person that are incomplete and overdue and or overdue for those people so for these people uh, in my system so this is a little bit more sophisticated report with group by options um, turned on which are available in the filters you'll note group by options are down here generally at the bottom. To do group by, you can simply choose which column you want. In my case, I chose to group by project. 
and then by the task owner of the task. And these two filter types were chosen, incomplete tasks that I'm a project manager of. That's how this report was built and it was saved up here in the menu. Another report is a 16-week capacity report that you can get. So here's a report of all my resources and how busy they are and in what project they're on. So this is a very popular report that we have. If I need to see how, why is Kevin Mills so busy this in four weeks, I can see that he's assigned 200 hours to that project. And then I can see, wow, there's too many tasks all at once uh, assigned to this individual. If I want to shift some of this uh, data to someone else, I can just drag it up here. And now Emily will get some of the hours that, that, uh, that, that Kevin Mills had. So Kevin Mills's red got a little bit less and Emily's got a little bit more. Again, this commonality, this has a saved report option in it, filter and layout choices, as well as the ability to expand all um, or collapse all levels here by choosing that option. So these are saved reports that I've saved. One last report that I, I'm showing you in this quick tutorial is time entries by last month that were entered last month by person. So here's my user project practice insight had 18 time entries and Steve West had three last month. So again, this report is generated from the reports menu. This is a time entry report. I saved the report in my menu up here so I can just jump to it really quickly. And a lot of reports can be edited, for example, if you want to double click on this row, I can actually edit that one. Maybe I meant to put in two hours of time entry. And if you edit that report, you'll see at the top a little menu that says you made some changes and will prompt you to want to refresh it. Nearly all of our reports are editable right from the report. So not only are these um, active data reports right out of the tool, they're editable um, from within. So again, to get some reports from the main menu, choose reports. It takes you to this menu where you can choose all the different options for reports. And then once you've saved reports, they'll appear in this menu, or if someone shared a report to you, they'll share via there as well.